Hello everyone, welcome back to Nursing with the Nomi, it's Nurse May. Today we're going to talk about progress notes. I'm going to give you uh, a bunch of examples of how to document certain situations so that you know what to do. Hopefully you can take some screenshots. Situation number one, you had a fall, you can say. Patient had unwitnessed fall with no injury on this date at 1530. This nurse was alerted to the patient's room by CNA. Patient was noted to be on the floor parallel to bed with head towards the head of bed. Patient denies pain, no injury noted. Patient was assisted back to bed, neuro checks initiated, vital signs were stable. Dr. Oliver was notified at 1600. Daughter Nancy was notified via phone at 1615. We'll continue to monitor for change in condition. You always have to have doctor notification. You always have to have family notification and neuro check started if, if applicable. And also really what you could add in here is when asked, patient stated he was trying to get to the bathroom and his wheelchair wasn't locked. So it rolled out from behind him when he stood up. These type of things really help when um, management is going through the fall because they have to put an appropriate intervention in place. Next, oh my goodness, you got an admission come rolling through the door. You wanna put a quick note in. Patient was admitted to room 107B via stretcher accompanied by one EMT on this date at 1500 from University Hospital with diagnosis of left hip fracture repair. Patient was oriented to room, medications are discussed, and nice pain discomfort at this time. Meds were verified with Dr. Oliver at 1315. Vital signs are stable at this time. You're discharging someone home. Patient discharged home on this date at this time via transport. Vital signs stable at time of discharge. Patient denies any complaints of pain. Medications and discharge education was reviewed with patients. Scripts were sent with patient. It is important to include that vital signs were stable, the patient was fine, no concerns, no complaints, because when you're discharging from a long-term care center to home, you know, sometimes the patients, they don't go home, they go straight back to the hospital. And you need to have in your documentation that they were actually fine so that they don't try and come back on you like they discharged me and I was in this terrible state. No, they were fine. So that's just something that you learn. But I've already learned that, so I'm telling you that now. <laughs> Refusal of meds. Say you have a patient, they will not take their medication. You are gonna try and try and try three tries. And you're gonna explain to them why they need to take the medication, okay? This is what you want to document. Patient refused meds times three attempts despite education and denotified. Done. Change the condition of a patient that resulted in sending them out to the hospital. Today at 1330, patient was noted to have a BP of 70 over 50 and pulse of 100. Patient going in and out of consciousness. EMS notified patient taken to University Hospital. MD notified notified at 1400. Family notified at 1415. Report called to hospital by this nurse at 13, 1350. Okay. You always need to call and give report to the ER nurse. Ouch! Somebody's having pain. So they need a PRN. Pain medication, what do you type in? Patient has complaint of aching pain to the right shoulder. Six out of 10, not relieved by change in position. Done. Give them until later on you follow up. Effective, quick. Okay, PRN anxiety medication. Whenever you're giving a PRN anxiolytic in the long-term care setting, you have to document three alternative measures that you did before you gave that pill. So, example would be, Patient noted to be yelling out and combative with staff during care. One-to-one -one food and repositioning ineffective. Okay, so you've tried three things, whatever those three things are, you tried them, didn't work, you have to give them that medication. 
say that you had a patient who has a change of condition and then you notify the doctor and they give you a new order. This is what you would document. Patient has complaint of sharp abdominal pain, vital signs stable. Dr. Oliver noted at 1800, new order for abdominal x-ray received. Family notified at wherever time, okay? You always have to document family notification of any new order. So you're working and you get a bunch of lab results that come through to you via fax or however they get to you, okay? You have to report those to the doctor. You also have to document that you reported them to the doctor. So you can say CBC BMP results from this date reported to doctor at whatever time. No new orders, okay? Or CBC BMP results from 6-1 reported to Dr. Oliver at 1500. New order for potassium 20 every day and repeat BMP on this date. Patient and or family notified of the new order. Done. Another example. Patient has complaint of nausea today. Dr. Oliver notified. New order received for Zofran 4 milligrams Q6 hours PRN. Patient and or family notified of new order. Death. Whenever you have a patient who dies, you have to contact the doctor for permission to release the body to the funeral home. This, again, is from a long-term care perspective. Um, you would put that order in as may release body to funeral home a family choice. You don't have to sign off on that or anything. Um, but this is a type of progress note you can put in when somebody dies. Uh, you can put patient expired if they were hospice, for instance. Patient expired with hospice nurse at bedside on 610. Patient noted to have absence of apical pulse for 60 seconds. Time of death 1800. Dr. Oliver notified at 1805. Family notified at 1810. Permission to release body to funeral home, a family choice received. A funeral home contacted. Okay, so those are some examples of how to document. I hope this helps with your documentation and progress notes um, because that is tricky. Just remember that you always document what happened, who you notified, and patient, noti patient or family notification and what you did. So you'll get the hang of it. Don't give up. And in our next video, we're going to talk about what to do when you have new skin issues develop on your shoes or you find them because we're doing a skin assessment. Stay tuned for that video. That's going to end it for today. Be healthy and keep learning. Have a great day.